In this video, I'll show you how to use the multi-placement tool to sew multiple areas on your quilt at the same time. On the left-hand side, you'll see my actual quilt. And I can stitch 14 inches um, lengthwise or depthwise on my machine. So the area between the two dark lines is where I will be stitching. So um, you'll open up Quilters Creative Touch Pro with gold and... Actually, you can do this without gold if you just have Pro um, by just selecting Select and Sew. But I'm going to show you how to access it through the gold features. Um, and it's very similar. So I'll just select Multi-Placement Pattern. You have to select a pattern before it'll let you get to a blank screen. And click OK here. I'm going to minimize so that you'll see both of my screens at one time. Okay, so um, before we started, I went ahead and drew some of my lines on here, and let me explain what those are. If you go up to plugins at the right top corner and select marking tool, okay, so these lines are, are marks that I made based on the area I'm going to quilt. So for instance, this triangle right here. On the left, this gold triangle represents the triangle here. This octagon shape here represents the shape here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. This area right here on my quilt, I'm going to stitch with a different design. And then this area here, which is somewhat of an oval, it represents this area right here here where I'm going to stitch a different design and if, if you can look at it in a different way I have a design here 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 and here and they all surround to make a circle around the star so um, I went ahead and marked some of these but I'm ready to mark the next octagon which will be the pink octagon right here so I've got my um, marking tool plugins marking tool and you will place your machine exactly where you want to mark. So at this point, I'm placing the needle of my machine right here on this pink, uh, dark and light pink corner right here. Okay. And then I'm going to move, I'm going to say down here at the bottom, I'm going to put add. Okay. Then I'm going to move my machine up to the next point, which will be right here. The first one was here, the second one is right here, and I'll say add. Then I'm going to move my machine over to the next point of the octagon and add. And you just keep following around, adding, move machine, add, move machine, add, move machine, add, move machine, add. Move machine, add. And so now I have the octagon. Now I want to get the triangle down here. So I could come, I would put my machine right here, which is where the triangle starts, and do add. Well, notice that the line went all the way from here, which is okay because the line is not going to show, I'm sorry, it's not going to quilt out. But to me, it, it's a little bit messy and hard for me to read. So I'm going to remove that last line. And I know I, I was right here. And I'm just going to follow my old line right here and say add. And then come down to that point, add. And come up and add. So sometimes you have to go back over something that you already did. And um, just to get to another point. Because right now I want to come down here and make the circle here. So I'm going to move my machine here and say add. And then I will move my machine over eh, about right here, add, and then here, add. Of course, that is not perfect, but um, it's close, and you get the idea. And so once you've drawn out the whole area you want to quilt, now you're ready to place your designs in here. So the first design that I selected was um, this circle. And it was a, I had a hard time finding a design that would go in the octagon because it has eight sides. I found a lot of hexagons, 
but not octagons. So I started looking at circles, found this one. So if you can imagine, um, my well, let's go back to my quilt right here. I want to start, I want to place that octagon here or that circle here. So basically, this is my quilt block right here. It's a kaleidoscope block with triangles on each corner. And the reason I need to know this is because when I get ready to place this, you only have so many options which to place it with. So um, come down here to placement, and I'm going to use four points and place this as if it was a block. And these areas will not stitch, of course, because there's nothing there. And that places this um, circle right in the octagon. So see the big circles here? Those are the corners that we're going to be able to we're going to place. So I'm placing my machine on my quilt right in the corner of this block right here. Okay? And that's where I want this first corner to go. So I just come over and I click that big gray dot. Then my second one is up in the top right, and I click the top right dot dot. Then I come to the bottom right, I click the bottom right dot, and then the bottom left, and the bottom left dot. And see how perfect it put it in there. You know, I may want to move this a little bit to move it around. That's up to you. And this is the important step. Once you've placed that, to place it again, you have to come down here to the right, click Pattern, and it, would you like to place this pattern again, yes or no? Yes, I would, because I want to put it right here. So again, now I'm on my machine, I'm over on this pink block. So I want my top left corner here. My top right corner here. My bottom right corner here. And my bottom left corner Well, bear with me just a minute. <laughs> um, because I'm doing this in an, um, animated mode, it's a little bit more difficult. Well, but when you have it on your on your machine, you would not have this. Mine, it was just overlapping itself. Okay, so now I've got it there. Now notice this one is blue. That means it's ready to sew. This one on the left, the one on the right is still gray. While I've placed it in the four corners, it's not really written in stone, I guess you would say. So you come back down to pattern. Do you wish to place it again? And my answer is no, because I don't have any more hexagon or octagons in that area. Okay, so it has to be blue. One time I placed all these triangles and I never went down to the bottom and said um, uh, replace or place pattern again. And so when I looked up at the screen, I only had one triangle up here. So make sure you do that each time. Okay, so then now I want to get my triangle pattern, which I'm going to use these curls here. And I'm going to move those out of the way so we can see it better. Now I want to change my placement down here to triangle. And I'm going to put that in all of these triangles. So the first one over here, Put my machine at the tip of the triangle, press the gray dot, I'll put my machine at the bottom right of the triangle, I'm going to do the bottom right dot, and put my machine at the bottom left of the triangle, and click the bottom left dot. And again, it's gray, so I want to come down to pattern. Do you wish to place again? Yes. Now it goes back over here. So I will start on this pattern, I mean on this triangle, put my machine there, I'm selecting the tip, put my machine in the other corner, and the final corner. And then pattern, would you place again? Yes. And I'm ready to place it in all of these squares as well. Now I'm going to pause it and place these in a few minutes because you don't want to see me do the same thing over and over. <laughs> um, but for now, I want to show you how to place the other area, which is this. 
So um, this was really hard because I'm doing sort of an oval design. And this is the design I'm using. It was from a double wedding ring. And the only way I found to really place this was using four points. So let me show you how I did that. Get it out of the way a little bit. So imagine this is my area right here I want to stitch in, which is comparable to this area here on the quilt. So what you have to do is have an imaginary square. And what I did was cut a square out of a, a sheet of paper. And I'll pin it to my quilt right here. And so I know that these are my four corners. And if I place this design in those corners, then it's going to fit right in this area. And you can kind of see the design there. So back over here, um, we have our imaginary design. I'm placing my cursor right here which is comparable to the top right corner of this rectangle on the quilt, okay? And I'm going to press the top right, well, it's really kind of the top left, but you kind of have to look at this sideways. And then this is my other mark here. So I've put the machine there. Now I'm going to put the machine here is one of my bottom marks. Let's do this side first. It'll look better. That. And then put my machine about right here. And click this one. Now see how it just fit right in there? And you'll want to make adjustments. Like I might want to get this little area in there. Make adjustments to put that in the right, right spot. You would just move your machine over and... Um, you know, and place your, your dots wherever you want those. I could play with it all day. Um, and you'll eventually get it right. Okay, so then you come down to pattern. Place again, yes. And now I'm going to do the same thing over on... I need to move this out of the way. I want to place it right here. So again, I've got my imaginary square on my quilt or my sheet of paper like this. And I've got it on this area now. So I move my machine to the top corner. And I'm going to select this. Then I'm going to do the right corner. Select this guy. And then the bottom corner. This guy. And then the other bottom corner this guy. And again, you'll keep um, playing with it until you get it to fit just right. And whenever you're pleased with it, you come down to pattern. Would you place this pattern again? Yes. And now I'm ready to place this pattern here and possibly here. Now I'm going to pause for a few minutes and fill all of these in. Okay, I'm back again and ready to show you, now that I have everything placed, how we're going to quilt this. So I'm going to select Quilt. And you will see these markings, the brown markings, but they're not going to show up when you quilt. And see all the blue lines? Um, you want to leave those in there because otherwise the machine is just going to stitch a line from area to area. And so I'll tell I'll show you what I'm talking about under optimize. Let's go there. And I'm going to select check for breaks and animate stitching. Now watch it. It's going to start right over here. And it stitches that first one. And it asks me, do I want to remove the break between here and here? If I click yes, it's going to sew a straight line there, which is not what I want. So I don't want to remove that break. And it goes on to the next one. There's my triangle. And it just keeps going and asks me, you know, if I want to remove any of these breaks. And, of course, I don't. So we're just going to leave those all there. But I do want my machine to not stop at these breaks. I want it to, like, sew to here and then just do a long stitch and sew this. And then do a long stitch and sew this. So to fix that, you go up under Settings. And where it says pause at trim lines, this might be turned on for you. Go ahead and turn it off. 
and select OK. And now, once you pull the bobbin and sew, the machine is automatically going to stitch all the blue lines one at a time um, each design and it's not actually stitching this long blue line it's stitching a real long basting stitch and then when it gets to the pattern it stitches several tie-offs and then goes to the next now if you wanted to tie off all of these um, by yourself and bury those seams and make extra knots whatever you want to do then you would not want the machine to continuously sew, you would want it to stop at all of these points. So um, in the settings, you would you would click that box that says stop at each um, tie off. But this way was so much faster for me because I used to stand there and place each individual pattern. Like I'd place this triangle, I'd sew and then tie it off and then I'd place this and sew and tie it off. But now, I can just have it sew all of these items at one time. So when you're done, you just click finish. And now this whole row will be sewn everywhere, you know, that I have highlighted. And of course, this area is blank because as you can see, I can't stitch up here. So I have to roll my quilt halfway to stitch that. So hope all that makes sense. Um, if you want to like and subscribe this video, you would get notice when I post more videos. Uh, these are not professional. They're just out here to help people out um, because I, I was stuck at first too. And Marie has taught me a lot and Janet George and several of us have gotten together. And um, it's just our way of sharing with you what we've learned. So thank you.